Well, hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, I really appreciate your comments on the last video I did for you about the multiverse and fractal dimensions and why the way these things interact create more or less UFO interactions. Uh, now, I realize it's kind of a complex video. That was kind of a summary, uh, excuse me, that was kind of a summary of like a couple decades of working with this and it's kind of the simplest I can put it, but I'll be having more videos about it in the future uh, if it seemed a little complex, but I think you can kind of get the basic idea is that, um, you know, the way we're shaped and our frequency determines the sort of things we interact with. And I was throwing in there some of this newly developed many interacting worlds model, which I've talked about here on YouTube and in different conferences, the idea that we're surrounded by parallel realities that can interact sometimes more or less. A uh, very interesting idea. And it mathematically it works. It's just a question of your kind of philosophical basis, but so far it, it matches exactly what the predictions of quantum mechanics would be with multiple realities instead of quantum waves. And then I threw in the idea of topological insulators, which I think is also a very interesting idea that applies to the crop circle. See some of my videos from a few months ago, but you know, basically what physics has found recently is that conductors under certain circumstances can act like insulators. And that is a really profound idea. I mean, would you think that a piece of paper could conduct electricity? I mean, it's that sort of idea. Something that you normally think of as a complete insulator could be a conductor. And what does that mean? It means that you can probably channel Pleiadians. <laughs> I'm not kidding, because you normally think this is my ability. I can't do anything more than what I've been taught I can do. And I can tell you as someone who's been in, not involved in RV for quite a while, that nothing could be, you know, that you actually have much more ability than you think you have. That's what RV shows us. I mean, some astounding abilities. And it's as astounding as something like a piece of rubber becoming a conduct, uh, conductor all of a sudden, acting like a piece of metal you can act like that piece of metal too and conduct in ways you didn't expect. That's why RV works and many other processes. So there's a lot to talk about here, but that was the idea of the video. And uh, I do appreciate your comments on it, whether you agree or disagree. It's just uh, something very interesting to think about. Now, I wanted to talk today about some of the comments I've heard from other researchers uh, recently about what science is and how ufology and other subjects should kind of fit within the scientific framework and kind of going on to say what that means is some sort of scientific formalism and logic and analysis and deduction. And uh, I specifically heard this recently from Richard Dolan in one of his live casts uh, talking about, you know, new age subjects and so forth. And I'm a fan of Richard Dolan's work. I, I read all of his books. I thought, you know, UFOs and the national security state just, you know, made a huge contribution to our understanding of the history of this phenomena and our own country and how that fits in. Uh, it, it's very important work. But when I hear him say things like that, I'm thinking, you know, what we're talking about here is a type of kindergarten scientific mentality that doesn't have anything to do with the way uh, academics and people versed in these topics really think about it now. Because if you think that science is just based on logic and analysis and deduction, I mean, nothing could be farther from the truth. That idea that we could formalize uh, scientific inquiry and turn it into kind of a systematic effort whereby we can kind of uh, deduce the correct sense of how the universe really works, that, that, that type of logic uh, is kind of even possible was really, uh, uh, it's an idea from about a hundred years ago, um, logical positivism, and it's not really accepted anymore. Uh, there was a very famous German mathematician, uh, David Hilbert, and he kind of created this idea of the formal program that we could kind of create this final mathematical system with a finite set of axioms and principles behind it that would be completely logically consistent. Uh, also echoed the work of uh, Alfred uh, Whitehead and Bertrand Russell um, and Principia Mathematica uh, from a little earlier. 
the same sort of idea. But you should be aware that uh, in the 1930s, uh, Kurt Gödel, working in Princeton, uh, completely disproved this idea that you can never develop a formal axiomatic system. It just, uh, it was completely, that effort was completely abandoned because Kurt Gödel invented what's called the incompleteness theorem. Uh, the incompleteness theorem says that no matter how watertight your logical system is, there are always going to be things that are true that you can't prove. Uh, later, Alan Turing went on to uh, develop this, the famous mathematician that broke the Nazi codes, his group, uh, the uh, an, uh, Enigma Project, uh, to break the Nazi cipher machines. And you might have seen that movie. Uh, the Imitation Game, all about Alan Turing and his work at Bletchley Park, you know, with the Code Breakers, uh, starring good old Benedict Cumberbatch. But anyway, you know, the point of this movie is so important. Uh, it, it's that even though things can be logical in a systematic sense, the social and moral systems we're around can also be completely illogical. And that's what Turing was pointing out, you know, with his incompleteness theory, he created his own halting problem the idea that you don't know when computers are going to just stop. Have you ever had your computer like just stop and you have to reboot it? That's what Turing was concerned about. Why does that happen? Can you predict it ahead of time when the computer is going to halt, especially with a very uh, challenging mathematical problem? When is it going to come to the solution? Or when is it going to decide it just can't finish the problem? Can you know ahead of time? Turing concluded, no, you can't. There is no way ahead of time to know when the computer is just going to completely halt because it can't find a solution or because uh, this problem is unsolvable. And that's the essence of incompleteness as it's applied to computers. Uh, in any case, uh, Kurt Gödel basically showed that in any system, there are going to be things that are true that you can't prove from within that system. And that's the incompleteness theorem, that any formal ideas we have are going to be inherently complete if they're just based on formal logic. And that really punches a hole in this whole idea that science is just complete, can be based completely on logic. You, you need intuition. There's a great book about it. I've talked about this book before in a previous video. It's Gregory Chaitin's Metamath. And uh, Chaitin is a former mathematician that worked at uh, the IBM Center in uh, New York, Armonk. And uh, this is really a great book. If you want something that's very readable by a mathematician uh, that explains why... Uh, those formal axiomatic systems are always doomed to failure. And uh, he really puts it very well. It basically shows us that uh, any sort of system is always going to be coming up against the unknown, coming up against randomness, and there's nothing you can do about it. It's just because uh, our sense of logic is always going to be finite and limited, and the universe is simply much more complex than that, and that those sort of systems don't work. Uh, let me just read you what he says here. Let me repeat, formal axiomatic systems are a failure. Theorem prov proving algorithms do not work, and one can publish papers about them, but they only prove trivial theorems. We've seen that in the, the essence of math resides in creativity, in imagining new concepts, in changing viewpoints, not in mindlessly and mechanically grinding away, deducing all the possible consequences of a fixed set of rules and ideas. Intuition cannot be eliminated from mathematics or from human thought in general. Okay, so this is what a mathematician would conclude in the end, is that we still need creativity and intuition. Uh, and let me give you an example of Gödel's incompleteness theorem to show you, you know, what Chaitin's talking about. I'm going, let me just think about this, these two sentences. The following sentence is true. The previous sentence is false. Think about it. Does that make any sense? Each sentence by itself is logically sensible. When you combine them, they completely annihilate each other. The following sentence is true. The previous sentence is false. So does that mean the following sentence is true or is it false or what? You can't tell anymore. That's how logically logically tight systems completely combust. And it'll happen to any logical system in the end. Actually, this is very good news for us because it totally shows us that there's room for uh, new ideas and new subjects and things we like to talk about in this channel, including UFOs, remote viewing, 
so-called paranormal phenomena and all these other things that we really can't understand so easily right now. But it shows that it's no biggie because any sort of system is going to be limited. Um, science now accepts the incompleteness theorem. And while there was a lot of work with, you know, to show that you can still get sort of consistencies in sort of systems when you're looking for it, even things like chaos theory show us that a small change in a deterministic system can produce a completely unpredictable result. So we're still surrounded by randomness, incompleteness, chaos. It's just the nature of the universe. Uh, this is the way it is. You have to accept it. Uh, the idea that you need to fit any of these subjects into a formal logical system, I think, is just a complete fallacy and shows a complete lack of understanding of the history of science and mathematics in the last 100 years. So anything you hear from any of us researchers, you should take it with a grain of salt. Just because I say it doesn't mean it's true. And just because Richard Dolan says something, I, I, he would agree with this, doesn't mean it's true either. And we all have our biases and our interests, but you need to kind of look at this from a practical point of view. And I think that's where we can all agree here. This has to be based on evidence. It has to be based on practicality. It has to be based on what's really going on. And that's the nature of scientific inquiry. It's evidence-based. And that's the big difference between people like us nowadays and people a few hundred years ago, even very recently, and in scientific professions. Uh, people used to believe things based on argument and logic. That was the Aristotelian way of doing things. But it all changed during the scientific revolution, where people started looking through microscopes and telescopes, looking at vacuums in glass tubes and things like this. And they realized the evidence didn't fit with the way that Aristotle said the thing, things were. And that's the nature of progress. It's not based on rationality and reason. It's based on evidence and kind of matching up with what's going on, with what you see is going on, with what you kind of believe is going on. And that, that to me, is the, the essence of science. And that's why this subject is so important. We have to understand the UFO topic, the topic of human contact with these extraterrestrial entities, or whoever they are whatever parallel reality they're from, because it's happening. And that's the evidence in front of us. If we ignore it, we're no longer being scientific. And that's the, the basis of the whole thing. here. So anyway, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Put your thoughts in below. I always appreciate your, your comments. Uh, I enjoy reading them. I read every single one, by the way. Okay, thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Take care for now, and bye.